All right, so I entitled the stream, Will the 49ers Draft Their Next Star Wide Receiver uh, in this upcoming draft? And um, I don't know. I mean, I... I I, I think there's I think this is a really intriguing draft for star wide receivers. I mean, um obviously Harrison at the top, Malik Neighbors, Adunze, I'm not a huge fan of. Brian Thomas. Oh. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Troy Franklin either. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Lad McConkey. He scored two touchdowns all year. Then there's Adonai Mitchell, there's the burner, Xavier Worthy, Keon Coleman, Roman Wilson, Xavier Leggett or Leggett. Ricky Pearsall, Malachi Corley, Devontae Walker. I mean, this is a really loaded group. Rice's kid, Jalen McMillan, uh, Javon Baker from Central Florida, who's really good. Ooh, I like um, him. McCaffrey, you know, his brother from Rice had a fin- phenomenal year. And then even down the list, I think there's some guys. Marcus Rosamy, Jack Saint from Georgia, I think's very underrated player. Isaiah Williams from Illinois, very underrated player. Uh, Bub Means from Pittsburgh can really run at 6'2", 215 pounds. There's some guys who can really, really run, too, in this thing. If you go deep down the list, Ty- Tyler Harrell from Miami is an absolute blazer at at uh, 6 feet, 210 pounds or so. Um, there's a bunch of receivers. And then we didn't even talk about the slot receivers. I mean, then there's, then there's a whole group of guys who operate out of the slot. I mean, Malik Washington from Virginia is amazing. Uh, a lot of people like Anthony Gold from uh, Gould from uh, Gould. Oregon State, um, and Ania Smith from A and M is a good player. I've watched him for years. Jaquan Burton from Flor- uh, Florida Atlantic. What do you think, guy? Is there a receiver that that you think fits the Niners specifically, or is there a receiver that you like that you'd love to see them grab in this draft? Well, I mean, I I, I wish his name was something else because if just if it, it, it's uh, it feels too easy, but I I do like Brendan Rice a lot. <clears throat> uh, I like Jacob Cowing. I don't know if you did you mention Jacob Cowing at Arizona? No, from Arizona, yeah. You know, another um, good receiver. I like Javon Baker from UCF, who you mentioned. Like, uh, you know, they they had a really explosive passing game with a kind of inaccurate quarterback, uh, and they went through some quarterback issues. At UCF this year, their their guy Jr. John Rice Plumley got hurt and came back, and um, and they had a really good offense. Like they had two really good receivers. They had a good run game. It all fit together. He catches a lot. I haven't looked at like his catch percentages or anything, but what from what I remember, he catches a lot of stuff just like in his vicinity. I think he's a good catch, a pass catcher. Um, so I mean, th- those are a few names, but like to me, that list can keep going and it's just listening to you talk I get I think they're drafting multiple receivers in this draft even though it feels kind of crazy to say because you look you go well they got Jennings um I don't you know I I'm I'm kind of past the Danny Gray Ronnie Bell's gonna have to earn it back right kind of situation so like to me it feels like a draft where you you can you can draft multiple receivers and guys who will like maybe one of them starts returning for you right away the other, you know what I mean? Like, I think you can get yeah. some snaps because when you look around the team, it's just it, where, where do you find snaps for somebody? It, just go through the positions, right? Like, where are snaps available? Snaps are available at corner right now, right? There's mm-hmm. snaps available at corner. Maybe um, linebacker. Maybe linebacker. There's kind of always snaps available if you can earn them on the defensive line for this team. Yeah, no doubt. We'll see what happens by, I guess the deadline is tomorrow, but there might be some snaps available at tight end, depending right on what happens with Brock right. Wright. And then offensive line, potentially, right? There's snaps available on the offensive line. There's not really a lot of snaps. If you look at, if we went back and looked at how many snaps Ray Ray played last year, what do you have like 18 targets? I mean, maybe, maybe that's high, but they, but those are, somebody has to get those targets. So there is a spot for somebody to come in, be a returner, get 20 targets, um, and then become maybe a bigger piece of the puzzle next year. So you can kind of soft red shirt if you're a receiver on the Niners. So are you saying that any receiver the Niners draft has to have returnability, you think? No. I mean, like, does Brendan Rice, he's not a returner, right? He kicked kicked returned a little bit. Uh, Definitely Colorado he did. 
Yeah. He doesn't look like you're, but I think the return is different all of a sudden. Like I, one of my early theories on the return, Larry, is are do running backs make more sense as returners now? Well, they're more usually more durable, you know, but they run lower to the ground. The, like now it's like a short area, find one hole and hit it. Right. Right. Like I just wonder if the, I don't know, the XFL kick returns I've watched were pretty, they lacked creativity. <laughs> like, so I got my theory being you need a, like, a running back who plays behind a shitty offensive line. Like that's what your returner needs to be now. Cause you got like linebackers out there trying to block in small areas. Like it's just a weird, it's a weird deal all of a sudden. And I wonder if running backs will thrive in the new NFL kickoff. So, but to answer your question, no, I don't, th- I mean, if you had to, you could put, I know people won't like it. You could put Christian back there, um, but you could put Ronnie Bell back there. Like whatever. I, I'm not overly concerned about it, especially if you take two guys. Take your best pure receiver first, and then take a guy that's a little more of a Swiss Army knife second. I don't, you know. Let's hone in on Brendan Rice for just a second. What do you think of him as far as, you know? I mean, do you think the Niners would be a good spot for him? I mean, you know, there's there, there's obviously the comparison to Jerry, but Jerry, to me, yeah. it's like Jerry is so so his his you know he's so in his own category that I don't really think anybody would draw any comparisons and say, well, is he as good as his dad? I mean, obviously he's not his dad. His dad, it's like comparing Pete Rose to Pete Rose Jr. or something. You know, it's like, come on. I mean, there's there's only one, there's only one Jerry. Um yeah. but I like this kid. And the and and there's several things about his game that I really, really like. One, he scored a touchdown on every 5.2 catches. Um, and that's a great, you know, that, and if you watch him, like he's really, he's not the explosive athlete that Jerry was, but he's not a bad athlete and he's got good height. He's got good size. And then when you watch him, um, Brendan rice, you see a guy who it's like, you can see that football is important to him. You know what I mean? It's like the guy runs the routes and he does a lot of the things. His concentration, I felt seemed like better than the typical college receiver. His, um, his, all this technique, as far as just, you know, his hand placement, when he would turn around his breaks in and out of the breaks. So he just seemed like a more refined receiver than your typical then your typical receiver. I mean, he just, he college receiver, he just looked so much more refined. Um, and obviously his father is the legendary Jerry Rice, who was awesome at Mississippi Valley state and great with the Niners and the greatest wide receiver of all time. But what, what do you think? What do you think is, is, is it better for Brendan Rice to be a Niner or to not be a Niner? I don't think it matters. Cause I think he can handle it. Like I've watched him a lot in his career going back to Colorado he is not phased by being Jerry's son. And, and at first you thought, well, maybe he's a Colorado. Then he goes to SC where the light is brighter. It didn't change him at all. So I, I don't think it matters one bit to him if he's a Steeler or a Niner. Um, I mean, maybe it matters to him, but I don't think it's going to affect him in any way. I think there's a lesson uh, in the Danny Gray draft pick for the 49ers. And I think Brendan Rice is a great example of the opposite. I think one of the lessons for the Niners, and, it, and this applied to Trey as well, but more so from a receiver standpoint, Danny Gray. If you're a one-trick pony, if we're bringing you in to say, okay, you do one specific thing, you're fast. And Debo and Ayuk and Jennings, they're not fast like you. So we're going to put you in specific spots where it's a chance for the fast guy. It's going to be really hard to get on the field because in order to really earn playing time, and earn a snap. You have to be consistent. You have to be even across the board. You have to be a good route runner, a good pass catcher. Uh, you've got to be able to do everything. Because these other guys, Ayuk and Debo, they do a little everything, especially Brandon, right? And so when you try to fit a piece in who just does one thing to a lineup of guys who can do multiple things, it's really awkward. It's difficult to find a spot for that player where you put them on the field three times a game but then somebody else is open because they ran a good route, you know? And I think what Brendan Rice is, is the kind of guy who you can give him, I think seven to 15 snaps a game early. And you're not looking for him to do just one thing. 
Like that's why Danny Gray can't get on the field because you can't give him 15 snaps because he's only doing one thing, right? Like to me, Brendan Rice is a little like the what, what we saw from Chris Conley late in the year, right? What was Chris Conley? He was on the field and ready for whatever the moment required of him. And when the moment required him to run a route that he never won with Brock and catch the ball, he did it. And I think that's Brendan because Brendan Rice can run every route and because he's so mature as a, as a football player that I can put him out there for 10 to 15 snaps and he will run the right route 10 to 15 times and twice the ball might come his way. So when you have specialty receivers, what, what, like Danny Gray needs to be on a team or needed to be on a team where he's like, they're bad. And he's like their number two guy. And he just gets to run and run and run and run and run. And four times a game, they hit him. And it's like, well, it doesn't matter that his routes weren't crisp or he dropped two balls. On the Niners, you have to run crisp routes and you can't drop the ball because you may not get another shot, right? And so that's the type of player they got to draft. They have to draft a player who can get on the field with consistency first. And then that will create production for that guy. And I think that's what Brandon Rice is. And I think that's that to me is the lesson in Danny Gray. Well, and, and you saw the latest on Danny Gray, right? With the whole. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I don't know if Danny Gray's head's in the right spot. To me, just being in the locker room and being around him, it seems like he lacks confidence. And um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I wonder about the durability of the kid. Seems like every hit he takes is, you know, he's, he's, it, it hurts him. Um, it just, he, he just seems. Like, yeah, I mean, I understand why Kyle wants him. And I've talked to Kyle about this before. Hey, the advantage of having the guy that can run off the, the top of the defense and, and stretch the field and create space. And, and that's what Danny's there for. But if you don't get on the field, you're not creating Jack. Yeah. You, you gotta be, I mean? you gotta be on the field for other stuff too, right? That yeah. over the top throw, such a low percentage throw that if you can't do other stuff, then it's, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, so Brendan Rice can do so many things that you can put him on the field in a normal situation and just expect that he'll be in the right place at the right time. Two other receivers I want to talk about. One is this kid out of Virginia, Malik Washington, and Dumpster Fire Dan is in here twice. He says, give me Malik Washington for value. And then he came back with, I love Malik Washington. I'd take him in the third or fourth round or mo over most of these guys. Uh, dumpster fire, Dan and I are in a, in lockstep on this one. We're both uh, big fans of, of Malik Washington. I, I, I love this kid. He was a, he's a grad student. He's only a five, 894 pound receiver started at Northwestern transferred to UVA grad student. He's originally from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Um, and he was one of the 10 semifinalists for the Blitnikoff award. This guy just, all he does is go out there and catch and catch and catch. He's also first team uh, academic All-American. So he's a smart guy. He was voted a team captain. So he's somewhat, somewhat of a leader. Um, you know, I, this guy was great in high school. He was great at Northwestern. Uh, he's great at Virginia. Um, you know, he was a three-time scholar athlete in high school. So, I mean, he's, he's that kind of a guy. He lettered four times in track. Um, you know, claimed a state title and a national championship in 2017 in the four by 100 meter relay, uh, honor roll student pursuing a master's degree in higher education. I mean, this guy's, and then if you watch him and you saw this year for Virginia, Virginia was not a good team this year, but man, this guy was everywhere. I mean, he may, he, his bad game was like nine catches for 91 yards and a touchdown. I mean, this guy had huge stats all year long. Um, have you seen Malik Washington at all from Virginia? And, and, and I guess more importantly, can a five, eight receiver, you know, succeed in the NFL to the point where you would take him on day two? Uh, I mean, to me, you've got a better shot. And a Kyle Shanahan, you just have a better shot with coaches who know how to get you into space. I don't know how how did they use him, Larry? Like, was he, was he running end arounds? Well, he did. He did a little bit of everything. I mean, literally, they they ran him on cross short crossers across the middle of the field. They ran him on on hitches. Uh, they ran him on downfield routes. Um, he's quick. 
He's he's a little bit more powerful than you think. Um, he he kind of has a Tyreek Hill vibe without that explosive speed. He's not quite as he's not the speedster that Tyreek is, but he's got the same body type. He's thick. He's powerful. He's explosive in short areas. I mean, I'm I'm just interested in in good player. You think if you think he's a you think he's a second or third round pick at five eight. I think he's a late third, probably early fourth round pick. I mean, I, I would Does like he to return. Him. He can return. Yeah, he can do okay. some returning. Um, I, I, I just think yeah, he's one of those guys that he's just very productive, very, uh, very mature. Um, you know, carries, you know, runs the runs the routes correctly. Um, you know, really good at using your movement against you. Um, he, he's good. I mean, I mean, he's, yeah. Joey Nichols says he's nowhere close to Tyreek, but he's a good player. No, he's not, he's not Tyreek, but he's built like Tyreek. He's got the Tyreek exact. I mean, if you want to say what's he built like, he's exactly Tyreek. Uh, but he doesn't have that kind of ridiculous speed. He's more of a moderate speed guy, but he's very quick in a short area and he's incredibly productive. And it's not like the guy played for, you know, some tiny little division three thing. He played in the ACC and he did it against some, some top tier guys. I really like him quite a bit. The other guy I wanted to ask you about was McCaffrey's brother. I mean, what do you think of McCaffrey's brother? Two years ago, he's a quarterback last year. He was a receiver for the first time and he had a bust out year. He ran a four, four, seven. He's got pretty good size. Uh, when you watch him though, there's something kind of underwhelming about his movement. It's like, is he really faster than Christian? I don't know. I mean, he he was for the stopwatch, but I don't know if he actually is as field fast as Christian. He to me he looked he looked good but not great. He looked you know dependable but not special. Um, have you looked at McCaffrey's brother at all? Yeah, and I've and I've you know I've watched all the McCaffreys as most of us have. I love the idea of converted quarterbacks at safety at receiver, at linebacker. Sometimes you get a linebacker that's a converted quarterback, but you often get them at safety. Um, and I really like him at receiver, just generally speaking. I'm intrigued by him. He does not look faster than Christian to me, but Christian also looks like he has, you know, taken a lot of um, track instruction in his running, right? When you watch Christian run, you see a person who appears to have worked on their technique with this, it in a, in a way that's great. And he looked like this back in college too. Christian ran from a form standpoint this way back in college. Um, and it's efficient. Now Christian doesn't really run away, right? When it comes to like runaway touchdowns, unless there's a significant gap he did in college, not as much in the NFL with the Niners. Um, I'm intrigued by him, but you know, to me, like this would be a low, this would have, to, I, I wouldn't take him on, you know, six, seventh round, six round. I mean, I don't know where he's, I haven't looked lately where he's projected, but that feels about right. Doesn't it? Seventh round undrafted. Are you talking about Luke? Yeah. Um, they're saying he might come up. There's a lot of teams that like him and he may come off the board, uh, end of the third or beginning of the fourth. That, that seems, that seems like an overdraft. Doesn't that seem unlikely to you? <laughs> when I first saw him, I thought, you know what? This guy's like a six round pick. Um, and I usually go with my first instincts and now I've watched him a little bit and I think, yeah, maybe a late fifth, but I've heard talk that there's, that he's very popular among NFL personnel people and that he may come off the board earlier. Um, to me, I would say the fifth round is the sweet spot there. 